All right. This is part five of the EOC crash course. So we are focusing on matter and how matter is used in life. Um, okay. So key things we're going to be looking at are some nutrient cycles like the water cycle, carbon cycle, also focusing on photosynthesis and cell respiration and ATP. So ATP, if you should have your packet in front of you that says strand five, matter and energy. So go ahead, write these notes down in the ATP part. ATP literally means energy. It is produced through a process called cellular respiration in the mitochondria. And two key equations I want you to write down are capturing energy. So when we're capturing energy, we are making ATP. When we are using energy, we are breaking ATP. So breaking ATP down is when we're using it. Capturing it is when we're making it. You also have this diagram in your note packet. So key thing here is we have photosynthesis, which is done by plants, which cycles into cellular respiration, which is done by animals. The way I think of this is respiration is like breathing. Animals are the ones that breathe. So sunlight comes into the plant, the chloroplast is what does the photosynthesis. It spits out glucose, which is just sugar and oxygen, which then goes into our mitochondria where we know our energy is made. Our ATP is made in the mitochondria. Mitochondria also spits out carbon dioxide and water, which is then recycled back into photosynthesis. So for example, like animals, the way we spit out our carbon dioxide is we breathe it out. When you breathe out, you're breathing out carbon dioxide that eventually the plants take that in. All right, so which statement best explains why the level of ATP in skeletal muscles changes during exercise? So how does our energy change in muscles during exercise? So if you're exercising, if we look at the graph, we're looking at our percentage of rest, resting ATP and the amount of time we're exercising. So we're resting up here and then we start exercising, exercising, and what do we see? The ATP goes down until we are exhausted. So why is the ATP going down? Is it A, adenine and phosphate, so the A and the P in ATP are destroyed by muscles? B, waste ATP accumulates in the bloodstream rather than in the muscles? We never have waste ATP. We never will have waste energy in the blood. C, the mitochondria increases ATP production in the muscles. So we know that ATP is not increasing because the graph shows it decreasing. D, ATP is used for energy faster than it can be produced. So if we're using something faster than we're producing it, it's going to go down. That is our answer. Okay, two, a transport protein in a cell actively transports a molecule across the cell membrane. Which chemical provides the energy for this process? So even if you don't remember what active transport is, we always associate the word energy with ATP. ATP is our answer. Anytime we're talking about what thing is providing energy for this, it's always ATP. All right, our next section. Also, you have two practice ATP questions in your packet as well to do on your own to have Ms. McGrath check. But our next section, levels of the biosphere. So key things here is some of these words may look a little confusing. Some of them may look familiar. So I'm going to break them down for you. Population. All that means, this is the smallest thing. It means one species. So we're talking about one specific species. We then step up and look at what our species is a part of. So a community. So multiple species that live in the same area. So population is inside a community because we're getting bigger as we go out. Then we get into ecosystem. Ecosystem is even bigger than community and population. So this is all of our living and non-living things. So we have like living things in the world, like animals, people, all different things that are alive, plants. But we also have non-living things. So like water, rocks, soil. Then we take a step back even further to the biggest one, which is biome, which is a huge area. So this is like a huge area of the world. So like. If we were talking about zebras, the huge area that they would live in would be like the African Sahara. That's where zebras live. 
this huge area is going to be our biome. Make sure you're labeling that on your note sheet. We also have levels of organization. So we have the smallest to the largest. Cell is the smallest unit of life. As we get bigger, we get into tissues. So like our skin tissue, our muscle tissue. As we get even bigger than that, we get into organs. So your heart, your brain, your stomach. Then we get even bigger into organ systems. So this is organs that are working together. So like our brain and our spinal cord or our lungs and our heart. Organ systems that work together or like our digestive system, our stomach and our large intestine and our small intestine. Then we get even bigger into organism. That's like the actual species. That's the actual living thing or like a human would be an organism. Then we get even bigger to population, which would be a lot of the organisms all together interacting. All right. The diagram below represents levels of organization in a living thing. Which item would best represent X? So if we have cell, we're going to take one step above that to something that's just a little bit bigger than a cell. If you look at your notes that you just should have written down, you will see that the next step up is tissue. All right, two, the Louisiana black bear is a threatened species. Scientists want to determine whether the black bear should be put on the state endangered species list. So we're talking about one species. Which level of organization will scientists use to determine whether or not they should? We're only talking about one species. We look back to our levels of organiza organization. If we're only talking about one species. We are talking about the population of that specific species. All right, next up, we have photosynthesis and cell respiration. You have this chart uh, in your notes. Go ahead and fill that in now. So we have our equation for photosynthesis and our equation for cell respiration. Key things here, just like that original picture that you also have in your notes, is that it's a cycle. Everything photosynthesis spits out, or everything our chloroplast spits out, our mitochondria takes in to start respiration. Everything respiration spits out, or all of our products, then have to get recycled with photosynthesis. So our organelles for photosynthesis is our chloroplants, chloroplasts, which are only in plants. Organelles for cell respiration are mitochondria, which are mainly in animals, but they are also in plants. Mitochondria is in everything. Okay, this is also another model in photosynthesis, just to show that we have our chloroplasts, spitting out our glucose, our sugar, and our oxygen, and our mitochondria taking that in to generate our ATP. Our energy spits out carbon dioxide and water and sends it back over here. You also have this picture in your notes as well, again. Okay, so number one, the flow of energy through an ecosystem involves many energy transfers. The diagram below summarizes the transfer of energy from sunlight through usable energy. So we have sun, we know that animals can't use sun directly, we have to eat in order to use that energy. So we want to know what process is cellular respiration represented by. So sun, we know, goes into plants first. Animals can't use it right away. So which one would generate ATP? Which cellular respiration is the only process that generates ATP? So the arrow that represents it must be arrow B because that's the one pointing to making ATP. Okay. Two, which of the following is a primary link between photosynthesis and cell respiration? So of these things, what is the main thing you see being recycled in photosynthesis and cell respiration? So if you look at your diagrams, the main word that you see being recycled listed here is carbon. Carbon is the thing that is cycled through or one of the things that is cycled through of the stuff listed. All right, moving on. We are into the water cycle now. So the water cycle, you may have seen this before in the middle school, is basically just how water is recycled through the earth in all the different forms. So we have evaporation going up into the gas form, then it condenses into clouds. Evaporation, when it happens on the leaves of plants, has a new word, it's called transpiration. I'm going to give you these definitions on the next slide. Then we have condensation.